Greetings, everyone. This is Liber Anarchy. <coughs> Excuse the voice. Sorry. Making a video for Theory Kin Nexus. As Theory and Therope Andrew H. has said, <coughs> this channel has atrophied and has nearly died, and he and I are both wanting to inject some new life into it. So what I thought I would do is make a video responding to a question that he asked me in PM <clears throat> because I thought it would be a worthy topic for this channel. Uh, before we begin, I will throw out a couple of uh, caveats. Uh, f the first one being, um, I don't think that I'm sick enough that I'm going to die. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. I... <laughs> I'm actually getting better. The cold that I had is get, getting better slowly, but I'm far better than I was. And the other thing with fatigue and nausea and lightheadedness and just like all kinds of crap that was extremely debilitating, I think that's getting better too. And I strongly suspect that it's because of antibiotics. Um, although, considering that it involved lots of medical tests that revealed nothing, um, <laughs> I swear my doc, my my general practitioner is is Colonel Clink in disguise. I I swear. Um, for those of you who aren't old enough, uh, that's that's a reference to the line "I know nothing." <laughs> But, um, yeah, it, I suspect that it's because of antibiotics that I'm doing a lot better. And, but then again, since it hit in September and it's going away in late March, early April, it might have been some <clears throat> bizarre seasonal effective thing. I don't know. I could, I could speculate all fucking day on this. Um, but I won't. I just wanted to let you know that I, I, I don't want people to worry. I don't want people to think this is one of those internet fake your own death episodes kind of thing or or a, or one of those cases where someone pretends to be addicted to, a, to some kind of drug or pretends to have a terminal illness or, you know, pretends to be like really mentally ill or something just for the sake of attention. <laughs> okay, the other thing um, I would want to say, for those of you in the more skeptical community, atheists and skeptics, um, I do want to let you know that, and I certainly would understand you thinking that I am crazy or making something up, role playing, whatever. I get that. And so I'm not offended when people look at other kin and therianthropes and 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 you know laugh at us or <laughs> you know, which is different than just, you know, mindless trolling of somebody's channel or harassing somebody. But you know, I, I get where um someone like um Ima Juno now uh, Juno's Den, um, you know, can make an, a video about other kin like he did a while back, and his whole response amounted to these people are crazy. Like, wow, I, I, you know, there's weird people on the internet, but wow, okay. And for you guys, um, I, I do know that, you know, as far as on on a purely physical level i am human and um i in since i have figured out my identity as other kin though i suppose i might actually fit better into the therian throat community um uh, i feel more at ease with my own humanity I, I, I'm more, I guess, I, it, like, feels more integrated into the whole person. I used to feel some kind of disconnect with my humanity, but now I feel entirely human. 
as well as feeling entirely my other self at the same time. And it's a very, it's actually a very good feeling and a very calm feeling, a very centered feeling. Um, my point is though, when I look in the mirror, I see, you know, two arms, two legs, a head, a neck, a torso, two eyeballs. You know, <clears throat> I'm not like skittering around on all fours thinking that I have all eights or something. Um, and the last thing, um, if you are one of the people I, uh, roleplay with, um, this is, I just want to let you know, this is completely disconnected from roleplaying. Um, when I'm roleplaying, I'm playing pretend. I enjoy making up alien civilizations, I enjoy making up names, I enjoy making up histories, um, I'm, I'm not... Uh, nearly, I'm not even close to being anywhere near <laughs> the level of someone like J.R.R. Tonkin, who was a linguist and a historian, and, you know, but I have <clears throat> drawn maps of fictitious land masses on made up planets and made up histories about, you know, warring societies and alliances and this and that and the other thing <clears throat> you know and I've made up alien races and I even have a technique for making up names <clears throat> and that is that I take names of deities or other mythical beings or places or famous people from various ancient cultures around the world <clears throat> excuse me and I mix and match letters within these specific names. Sometimes I omit letters, sometimes I'll add new letters, and by the time I'm finished I have a name that sounds foreign, um, it's justifiably alien sounding, or say elven sounding, or something like that, but it, it doesn't sound deliberately made up. Many people when making up alien names or you know names for fantasy creatures etc they will just add a bunch of syllables they'll throw in some x's and some z's and some y's so you don't have to make something sound you don't have to make something long and throw in some letters that don't appear very often in the english language in order to make it alien um it's yeah. It is more realistic to have a name with one, two, three syllables rather than a name, you know, a name with, you know, six syllables and, you know, two Z's in it and a Y and an X. Um, people do that, do the same thing with alien planets or made up cities. Um, but, um, yeah, so that's, you know, or, or, or with alien races. Um, I recently made up a character that is a scorpion centaur. It's also a cyborg it, due to some die rolls. Also a vampire, again, due to die rolls. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, he just as easily, you know, he's, he, he there's a, likelihood that I he was going to come out as a as an anthropomorphic lizard or some kind of water creature like an octopus because octopus is, octopi I guess is the plural they're they're pretty intelligent and um the planet was almost going to be a water world but instead my friend and I made a story about a dying planet so it was a lot of desert similar to Mars. The reason I say all this, you know, I say this has nothing to do with role playing and I talk about role playing is because <clears throat> you know, I want you to know that yeah, there there are things I think are cool. I like arachnids, I like bugs, you know, I like insects and 
you know, it's, you know, I like underappreciated animals. I tend to like desert animals. But, you know, if, if I have a character, no matter what the character is, it's not somehow reflective of my spirituality or, or what I think of is past life memories or something. No, I'm not necessarily discouraging people from, you know, making a character that's based on what they think is a past life or something that might be actually pretty fun to play. Uh, but I do want to let peop the people I roleplay with, if you hear this, that I'm not like, you know, it's not like I'm a person who's just taken the roleplaying a wee bit too far, nor am I going to, you know, inject any, you know, I'm not going to sit here and inject any therianthropy or something into games. That's not to say that I wouldn't say play a werewolf or something, or something that shifts into a different animal. But honestly, um, since I already created this scorpion centaur character, um, actually too, is after, like, looking into Sumerian mythology, and, um, which is interesting, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not something that I personally, it, I don't feel like connected to Sumerian mythology, for example, but it is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> no, but, you know, I, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've made my scorpion, dude, whatever. Now I might, if I were to make another character that, for, you know, was some kind of shifter, I might say, well, wouldn't it be neat if, you know, I could change into a bird or something? It, it wouldn't, ha it would have nothing to do with my personal identity. I made a spider because I like spiders. Actually, I rolled up a character that was a cyborg, and it turns out that I could have, I could ch choose to be, um, a spider cyborg instead of like you know any other a number of different kinds and I'm like screw humanoid this is neat I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be a giant spider <laughs> yeah awesome so yeah but it's because it's neat I don't feel like I'm somehow spiritually a robot robot <laughs> um yeah no I have actually seen some people who identify as inanimate objects in the King community. Um, two of which, to my knowledge, were certainly not trolls, they, or, or at least to my mind. However, I'm sure that others have been. But I won't talk about their identities because they're not on this channel. But they'd be, certainly be welcome to join. Now... Having said that, let's see. Okay, so moving right along. Um, Therianthrope Andrew 8. Well, okay. I told um, Therianthrope Andrew H. in a PM that I have found my kin type, and it is a scorpion. And he asked me, and how did I come to this? So, here we go. <clears throat> well... Um, I'm not going to get into, like, the whole story, because I've been in the Other King community for a while. And since, say, 2001, the feeling of not being human, the feeling of being, quote, a space alien or something, end quote, as I would always say, got me into researching things like star seeds, angels incarnate, um... Just some very un unusual stuff. There, you know, there, there are, are people that claim some pretty unusual claims. So, you know, I I had found some channelers and star seeds and just all kinds of unusual things and some multiples. You know, people with dissociative identi identity disorder, but there are multiple systems who do not consider it a disorder and that's fine 
Um, not being a multiple, it's not something I can really speak about with any authority aside from saying, this is what the label is. <laughs> yeah. But, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. So, so in 2001, I finally just, through following links and links and links and links, happened upon otherkin.net. And lo and behold, I found the other King community, and I did find the Therian community, and before then, I think I did know about the real-life vampire community, but, yeah. So, I was reading tons and tons of articles, and it was as close to right as I was ever going to get. Um... I didn't feel like it was the perfect explanation because there were a lot of people who were claiming to be, say, you know, certain types of fae and, you know, dragons and elves and, you know, different kinds of elves and, you know, like, say, the Elinari, they have they have a page. I don't, I don't know if their site's still up. If it is, it's elinari.net. See... I believe it's e l e n a r i dot net. Please correct me in comments if I'm wrong. I don't want to um, botch other people's websites. So none of it <coughs> felt exactly right, but I felt I was in the right place, you know. And for years, I would you know, wonder what I am, and to make a long story short, uh, you know, I've done lots of meditations, I've had, um, you know, I've tried lucid dreaming, I've tr I've tried any number of things, um, and, and I'm relearning to lucid dream again through dream journaling, and, um, but, um, yeah, I, uh, I try. I've tried astral travel because it's talked about quite a lot in the King community. It's never something I've managed to do. Well, let me put it to you this way: out of body experiences, because there's nothing that says the sensation of being out of body means that you're actually out of your body. And of course, I welcome anyone's opinion regarding that, but I've never been able to induce controlled OBEs. Hi, Seti. My cat just came into the room. And he's going to have a nap on a comforter behind me. Hey, Seti. Okay. So, yeah, I... And, um, and I've, you know, tried, oh, well, if you light a candle and think about a seven-pointed star, you you know, you can see your kin type or something, you know. And, and I don't begrudge anyone the right to do any meditations like that. that. That may work for some. It never worked for me. And I've gone through lots of identities, um, lots of guessing. Part of the problem was when, you know, I... I I have some issues. I had more issues from my childhood. And I had very low self-esteem. And I didn't value my own opinion and my own perceptions as much as I valued that of others. I ended up befriending, quote, befriending somebody who was manipulative. And a few people who, who were manipulative. Some of us were more manipulated. Some of us were were m more or less the manipulators. And I wanted their approval. And so what I did is I lied to myself about different identities. Now, these people, I, I don't know if they were just trolling the rest of us or if they were this crazy or what was going on, but... These people had very, very elaborate stories about, you know, remembering tons of past lives. 
and very, very, um, you know, neat and powerful kin types. And I do understand that there may be some fiction kin, media kin, otaku kin listening. If I mean, if you, for whatever reason, identify as a fictional character, I'm not here to judge you personally. That's ju- It's just not my job to judge what goes on in your mind space. But these individuals started uncovering lies within video games and anime and all sorts of things. And it wasn't just having lived in this or that universe. It was being like the main characters or you know some some other character like say from the the um th- this is just an example um cuz i don't remember their specific claims but if you've ever seen the series scryd um there's a character called radical good speed <laughs> yes i have shortened the world but yeah there um you know, a character like that or something, not just like, oh, I feel tied to that universe or something, but the, you know,